Il 7 luglio 2017, 122 paesi hanno votato a favore del trattato sulla proibizione delle armi nucleari. I paesi che non hanno armi nucleari, ma che vivono sotto la loro minaccia, hanno votato a favore del divieto. Senza la consapevolezza della maggior parte dei loro cittadini, i governi delle potenze nucleari del mondo non hanno votato. Eppure, il divieto è andato avanti. Sta succedendo qualcosa di nuovo. So the humanitarian initiative was really a way to challenge the mainstream security discourse that treat these as tools of international security, um, the language of deterrence, uh, treating these weapons as something that prevents conflict, instead of actually examining them for what they are. So the focus changed from tools of security and stability to human beings are destroyed. Nuclear weapons are catastrophic to humanity and catastrophic to life on this planet. After all, it's the people who suffer, and this has been forgotten in that debate. Now, we today have a massive body of evidence that a nuclear war would simp simply not only not be winnable, it would likely destroy life on Earth as we know it today. I mean, basically, I think we face an incredibly dangerous situation. I think if we don't get rid of these weapons, they are going to get rid of us. And everything that we cherish, and it doesn't have to be. It's not a practical weapon. It's basically a, just a big symbol. And I think that's why the treaty is so effective, because you fight symbols with other symbols. La campagna internazionale per l'abolizione delle armi nucleari è stata lanciata da persone che ritengono che le armi nucleari producano delle sofferenze indicibili per gli esseri umani e creino una catastrofe umanitaria inaccettabile. So we established this campaign around 2006 and we felt that the specific objective needed to be a treaty that outlawed nuclear weapons completely. Uh, so we're about 11 years old now. Um, and was very much inspired by the campaign to ban landmines and the Cluster Munitions Coalition. Il processo in seno alle Nazioni Unite è in corso e 50 paesi devono ratificare il trattato affinché possa entrare in vigore. Questo non significa che le armi nucleari scompariranno il giorno dopo, ma è l'inizio della fine. We Hibachia have been waiting for the ban for 72 years. Let this be the beginning of the end of nuclear weapons. La storia delle armi nucleari è breve. All'epoca della Seconda Guerra Mondiale, diversi scienziati rivelarono che sarebbe stato possibile realizzare una bomba estremamente potente utilizzando la fissione atomica. Le forze armate tedesche avrebbero potuto avere successo nelle loro ricerche e trovare l'arma definitiva. At the moment of surrender, Hitler had in the blueprint stage transoceanic rockets, which could have destroyed our city. Per il governo degli Stati Uniti era una questione di sopravvivenza e stanziò ingenti risorse per la costruzione della bomba atomica. Ma quando fu realizzato il primo test nel deserto del New Mexico, quando un sole in miniatura annunciò l'inizio dell'era nucleare, l'esercito tedesco si era già arreso. La decisione di usare la bomba sulle città giapponesi fu presa in una nuova situazione segnata dall'avvicinarsi della fine della guerra e dalla spartizione del mondo fra le potenze vittoriose. Durante la Seconda Guerra Mondiale, gli eserciti massacrarono la popolazione civile radendo al suolo intere città in modo spietato. Questi bombardamenti anticiparono l'orrore nucleare che stava per avvenire. Il 6 agosto 1945, una bomba all'uranio fu sganciata su Hiroshima. At that moment, I saw in the window uh, the tremendous flash. And I couldn't comprehend 
But before you had a chance to comprehend what was happening, I knew my body was flying up in the air. After that, I lost consciousness. Now, when I regained the consciousness in the total darkness and uh, silence, I knew, finally, Americans got us. I couldn't move my body, so I knew I faced death. But I wasn't panic-stricken at all. Then, all of a sudden, strong hand touched me from behind. Don't give up, don't give up. Keep moving, I'm trying to free you. You see the light coming from that opening and move toward it as quickly as possible. Now, I'm trying to free you. Come on, keep pushing, keep kicking. Finally, he was able to free me. Also, it happened at 8.15 in the morning. It was dark, dark like twilight. And then I began to see in the dark some moving objects. But they were so silent. They didn't look like human beings. The hair was standing up and all curled up and skin and flesh were just falling out. Some were carrying the eyeballs in their hands. The skin and the flesh hung. <laughs> the majority of my schoolmates were working in the center part of the city. They are the first one who simply vaporized, melted. From my school, over 300 students were there. I'm alive because I wasn't there. I was somewhere else, far, you know, one mile away. I was inside a building. I was buried by the collapsed building. I must have been protected. But those people had no protection directly under. L'esplosione causò indicibili sofferenze e nessuno poteva assistere ai feriti. Tre giorni dopo, una bomba al plutonio fu sganciata su Nagasaki. Oltre alle persone che morirono immediatamente, le vittime avrebbero continuato a morire per lungo tempo a causa delle radiazioni. So you can imagine the situation when the ICRC, so we, we were, our doctors uh, and delegates, happened upon the scene in Hiroshima. Out of 300 doctors present in Hiroshima, 270 had died. Out of 1,700 nurses, 1,600 had been killed. And out of some 140 pharmacists, 120 had been killed. So the original number of fatalities in Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of 1945 was 140,000 in Hiroshima and 70,000 in, in Nagasaki. Those figures uh, increased two, between two and threefold in the next five years due to radiation sickness from radiation exposure. In the first second, the white light is blinding, the heat immense. In the first day, fires consume the city and there's no way to fight them. Your skin is badly charred. In the first week, those hospitals that are still functioning are overwhelmed and can't treat the injured. Others who seem fine suddenly fall ill and die from radiation sickness. In the first year, radiation has seeped into the water and the soil. Crops and animals are contaminated. The humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons are horrific and span generations. It's time to ban them now. A corto plazo vamos a tener efectos por, por básicamente cuatro cosas. Eh, la onda expansiva te va a hacer unos vientos huracanados que destruyen todo a su paso y que eh, convierten eh, a todo, incluso los mismos cuerpos humanos, en proyectiles. Luego eh, se produce una onda de calor en el orden de los eh, millones de grados centígrados que eh, lo que esté más cerca o dentro de, de, de las partes eh, más calientes de esa onda se evaporan, se vaporizan. Pues el efecto que depende de la dosis de la radiación y el que depende solamente de la exposición a la radiación gamma. 
Eh, ante una exposición bastante grande, los efectos pueden durar horas o incluso días. Hay una destrucción masiva de los órganos internos. A, a, a las dosis medianas pueden durar meses o años recuperándose de lesiones si es que se recuperan. Y si se logran recuperar, entonces hablamos de los efectos crónicos, que sería una incidencia mucho más alta de varios tipos de cáncer, especialmente la leucemia, el cáncer de tiroides, cáncer de mama. For example, my uncle and aunt, when we heard they survived, we rejoiced. But a week later, they started feeling so sick. They started vomiting on, and they started having purple spots all over the body. And that was a sure sign they are going to die. La, la bomba nuclear produce una onda electromagnética que este, interrumpiría la comunicación electrónica, afectaría muchísimos aparatos eh, de los cuales depende, eh, dependemos ahora actualmente, especialmente los hospitales. And a lot of people suffered with a scar, a very bad scar. They, look, they didn't look nice. So some thoughtless people started calling them all oh, their ghosts and so on. Social alienation, yeah, and discrimination was real. So those girls with that kind of, you no, know, they lost the opportunity for equal treatment for anything, employment, marriage, housing, and whatnot. So it was not just the physical damage, but the social, psychological, in every way, the city just disappeared. L'uso della bomba fu giustificato come un male necessario per porre rapidamente fine alla guerra. Ma questo ora è stato messo in discussione dagli storici. Recent research shows that uh, it's highly unlikely that the Japanese surrendered because of nuclear weapons. They surrendered because the Soviets came into the war the night. Before we bombed Nagasaki, the Soviet Union declares war. It significantly changes our view of nuclear weapons writ large because Hiroshima was the first impression. It was the, the notion that set up all the subsequent thinking. And if we change how we think about, about Hiroshima, it changes everything. Da quel momento in poi, qualsiasi potenza sprovvista di armi nucleari si sarebbe sentita vulnerabile. Negli anni successivi, l'Unione Sovietica, il Regno Unito, la Francia e la Cina svilupparono le proprie bombe atomiche in un contesto di confronto tra il blocco occidentale e quello orientale, nel periodo noto come Guerra Fredda. Questo è anche il periodo in cui furono fondate le Nazioni Unite nel tentativo di creare un forum di mediazione per evitare che i conflitti si trasformassero in scontri armati. Gli Stati membri, inoltre, firmarono la Carta dei diritti dell'uomo, che sancisce diritti universali al di sopra degli interessi nazionali e del potere nazionale. Tuttavia, queste aspirazioni lasciarono il posto a una dura realtà in cui due superpotenze dominarono il pianeta con la forza e lo misero in pericolo con una corsa irresponsabile agli armamenti. Uh, the United Nations had been working to address the threat of nuclear weapons since its foundation. Um, the very first resolution adopted by the UN General Assembly was for the total elimination of all weapons adaptable to mass destruction. And yet it took all that time to finally put in place a, a total ban on the weapons. Fino a 200 test su armi nucleari furono effettuati con bombe sempre più potenti. Si stima che le radiazioni di questi test abbiano colpito milioni di persone. And in order to test nuclear weapons, primarily they've been tested on the lands of indigenous people. They've been tested on the lands of those without power. And that's, that's deliberate. So in the 1950s and 1960s, uh, nuclear weapons were tested in Australia by the British government with the full support of the Australian government. Uh, and this has had a profound impact, particularly on the indigenous communities that live nearby. And even though the tests stopped decades ago, the consequences are still being felt today. In Giappone, l'esercito americano fotografò e misurò tutto, 
anche le conseguenze delle radiazioni sui corpi e sulla salute umana. Tutto ciò all'insaputa della gente comune. Tutte le informazioni furono censurate per molto tempo, incluso le testimonianze dei sopravvissuti. Later on, the United States established something called ABCC, Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So people were so happy, finally we were going to get some medical attention, medical supply. But no, the sole purpose of those was to study the effect of radiation on human body, but not to give supply or help, medical help. When people found that out, you can imagine, they felt, oh, they are simply using us as guinea pig. And then there was quite a bit of uh, oppression, so people are not that free. Even the press were not free to write about. And not only that, they started confiscating personal things among the survivors. Some people kept the diaries, or the pictures, photographs, slides, all kinds. Of, but those things were too dangerous. They were all confiscated, 32,000 items in all, and they were shipped back to Washington. Neanche gli americani seppero niente fino a quando alcuni coraggiosi giornalisti riuscirono a eludere la censura, in modo che la gente potesse venire a conoscenza dell'orrore nucleare. Le armi nucleari erano giustificate come armi da difesa. È la dottrina della deterrenza. Una bomba nucleare dovrebbe dissuadere il nemico dall'attaccare. Nel caso dei due blocchi della Guerra Fredda, la certezza della distruzione reciproca fu considerata come una garanzia di pace e sicurezza nel mondo. Durante la Seconda Guerra Mondiale, tuttavia, in diverse occasioni, il confronto tra le potenze non ha provocato una guerra nucleare per un soffio. La più nota è la crisi dei missili cubani. Si profilava una guerra aperta e diversi consiglieri del presidente Kennedy consigliarono di invadere l'isola e persino di usare armi nucleari. Ma all'ultimo momento è stato fatto un passo indietro e questo scampato pericolo ha creato le condizioni per i primi accordi di riduzione dei test nucleari. So deterrence, uh, the notion that nuclear weapons have kept us safe during crises is uh simply historically inaccurate. The uh, nuclear believers often say deterrence has been perfect because there's been no nuclear war. It's a ludicrous argument on the face of it. Uh, in 1948, uh, the Soviets uh, blockaded Berlin, and it's a situation which could easily have led to nuclear war. The United States had a monopoly on nuclear weapons, but the Soviets weren't deterred. In 1950, the Chinese Uh, joined the Korean War despite the U.S. moving nuclear weapons to Guam, and so on. You say deterrence has never failed. Clearly it has. If human beings are fallible and if human beings are involved in nuclear deterrence, then nuclear deterrence, by definition, is inherently flawed. It will fail. It's not a question of if. It's just a question of when. Al pericolo di un uso intenzionale si aggiunge il rischio di incidenti. Ci sono attualmente 2000 armi nucleari, pronte per essere lanciate in pochi minuti. Nel 1983, il sistema radar sovietico ha interpretato erroneamente una formazione di nuvole come un attacco missilistico. So many stories of near misses and this Colonel Petrov from Russia who was such a hero, he was in the missile silo and he saw something that indicated that they were being attacked by us and he was supposed to unleash all his bombs against New York and Boston and Washington, and he waited and it was a computer glitch. And he even got reprimanded for not following orders. It's, it's like uh, we're just lucky. We're living in a fantasy. We you know of at least six occasions when the world has come within minutes of nuclear war because deterrence failed, because one or the other nuclear weapon state, usually the United States or Russia, believed it was under attack and actually began the process of launching its own nuclear weapons only to stop at the very last minute when the mistake was discovered. Six times that we know about that this has happened. 
This is an insanely dangerous situation. Todas aquellas herramientas, en este caso armas, que inventamos, se acaban usando. Cuando hay una probabilidad de uno por mil, tú dejas pasar suficiente tiempo y se produce el hecho del uno por mil, ¿no? Nel 1968 è stato firmato il Trattato di Non Proliferazione Nucleare dalla grande maggioranza degli Stati Sovrani. Ha cercato di limitare il possesso di armi nucleari e di fermare la loro proliferazione, ma non ne ha vietato il possesso da parte dei cinque Stati che avevano già condotto dei test a quel tempo. E cinque Stati, gli US, Russia, China, England e Francia, promise to give up their nuclear weapons if all the rest of the world wouldn't get them. And everybody signed this treaty except India, Pakistan and Israel and they went and got their own bombs. For about 70 years, uh, we had sort of an in international legal system that accepted that five countries have it. It didn't reject nuclear weapons. It did say that we should work towards disarmament, but it also kind of acknowledged that, well, these countries have them so far and they are kind of important for security for them. And that's just not, um, it's just not good enough for, the, in, for law. Uh, you can't have a, an apartheid law that treats people differently or countries differently. You have to have the same rules for everyone, otherwise it's inconsistent and it's not going to work. La proliferazione nucleare e il progresso tecnologico stanno creando nuovi pericoli. Esiste la possibilità che un piccolo gruppo possa costruire una bomba. Esiste anche il rischio che un paese dotato di armi nucleari possa subire delle rotture interne o dei disordini sociali e che le armi non siano più sotto un controllo sicuro. Anche i sistemi informatici possono essere hackerati e infine qualsiasi tipo di esplosione in una centrale nucleare creerebbe una contaminazione massiccia e incontrollabile. Millions of people would be exposed to lethal doses of radiation and tens of millions of people would be exposed to doses of radiation that would put them at increased risk for cancer should they survive the immediate post-war period. So this is, this is an enormous problem and um, one which is generally ignored completely. Anche un conflitto limitato a una piccola area avrebbe conseguenze globali per miliardi di persone. The global consequences come from climate disruption. A hundred Hiroshima sized bombs going off over a hundred cities cause a hundred firestorms. And they loft about five and a half million tons of soot into the upper atmosphere, which blocks out the sun, cools the planet, dries the planet, and as a result of this disruption of food production, this limited war would, we believe, trigger a worldwide famine that would put up to 2 billion people at risk of starvation. Negli anni 80, la corsa agli armamenti stava raggiungendo il suo apice. Migliaia di testate nucleari sono state prodotte ogni anno per un totale di 70.000, con le quali è possibile distruggere il pianeta più volte. Dall'inizio dell'era nucleare, gli avvertimenti e le proteste della comunità scientifica si susseguirono e furono rapidamente portati in piazza. Nel novembre 1961, le pioniere furono le donne per la pace che iniziarono uno sciopero, manifestando pubblicamente e marciando contro le armi nucleari in 60 città degli Stati Uniti. So women have always been at the forefront of anti-war activism. The Women's International League for Peace and Freedom was actually founded in 1915 during a war, uh, during World War I. And it was founded by women from all over the world. Women were instrumental in the 1960s campaigning for a nuclear weapon test ban treaty, um, collecting baby teeth to show the effects that atmospheric nuclear testing was having on the environment and on children um, and on citizens throughout the world. In Europa, i pacifisti organizzarono marce e proteste contro le basi nucleari in diversi paesi. Alcune delle più grandi si svolsero nel Regno Unito, dove la campagna per il disarmo nucleare ha organizzato marce di protesta fin dal 1959 e ha creato il simbolo che viene ancora associato alla pace. Nel 1982, un milione di persone si è radunato contro le armi nucleari a New York. Un anno dopo, in Europa, ci sono state massicce proteste in diverse città che hanno portato in strada circa 3 milioni di persone. 
Gli anni Ottanta hanno visto la possibilità di una guerra nucleare limitata in Europa, dove entrambe le parti disponevano di enormi forniture di armi nucleari a corto raggio. Le esercitazioni militari avevano creato un ambiente prebellico, la tensione era al culmine e il clima sociale a volte diventava apocalittico. They had a march in Kazakhstan that was led by this so, uh, Kazakh poet Olza Sulmanov because the people in the Soviet Union were so upset in Kazakhstan they had so much cancer and birth defects and waste in their community and they marched and stopped nuclear testing Gorbachev said okay we're not going to do this anymore En Zaragoza teníamos una base norteamericana y por tanto éramos objetivo nuclear evidente. Promovimos lo que fue el primer, la primera movilización pacifista poderosa en España a la base norteamericana, que fueron 30 kilómetros de cadena humana, más de 30.000 personas. A movement in Europe, in the Soviet Union, here in North America, stopped that march to war. We reversed the Cold War arms race. And I believe that we saved the world. Ma le turbolenze causate da questi allarmi e da queste proteste sociali hanno creato le condizioni per una successione di trattati e di effettive riduzioni degli arsenali nucleari. La svolta è arrivata quando Reagan e Gorbachev si sono incontrati per due volte a metà degli anni Ottanta. Nonostante le difficoltà, nel 1987 è stato firmato il Trattato sulle Forze Nucleari Intermedie che ha messo fine alla crisi dell'euromissile. Questa tendenza al disarmo è stata seguita da trattati di riduzione dei missili a lungo raggio all'inizio degli anni 90. Il movimento pacifista ha iniziato a svanire con l'allentamento delle tensioni internazionali, anche se in realtà il pericolo nucleare rimane sulla nostra testa. Nel frattempo, vaste aree del pianeta si sono dichiarate zone denuclearizzate. Nel 1991, il Sudafrica ha aderito al trattato di non proliferazione e ha iniziato a smantellare le sue sei bombe. L'Ucraina, la Bielorussia e il Kazakistan hanno restituito alla Federazione Russa le armi nucleari che avevano ereditato dall'Unione Sovietica. Il patto di Varsavia è stato sciolto e la guerra fredda è terminata all'inizio degli anni 90. Sembrava raggiunta una distensione, ma qualche anno dopo le cose sono tornate a complicarsi. Nonostante la scomparsa del suo nemico originario, la NATO ha continuato a esistere ed espandersi. Reagan said to Gorbachev, uh, don't worry, let East Germany be united, West Germany enter into NATO and we promise you we will not expand NATO one inch to the east. Le spese militari sono state giustificate con il presunto pericolo dei cosiddetti stati canaglia. Ci sono state guerre e occupazioni che non hanno fatto nulla per creare le giuste condizioni per l'avanzamento dei trattati di disarmo. Nel 1995, non essendo stato portato a termine il disarmo previsto nel 1968, la conferenza di revisione del trattato di non proliferazione ha deciso di estendere indefinitamente il trattato in cambio della creazione di una zona libera da armi di distruzione di massa in Medio Oriente cosa che deve ancora essere realizzata. In questo contesto sono iniziati i tentativi per creare delle reti internazionali di organizzazioni antinucleari con la comparsa di Abolition 2000. Then we got together and drafted our own statement. We asked for a treaty to eliminate nuclear weapons by the year 2000. We acknowledge the inextricable link between nuclear weapons and nuclear power and ask for the uh, phasing out of nuclear power and the establishment of an international renewable energy agency. A cinque decenni dalla sua entrata in vigore, il TNP non ha mantenuto la promessa di realizzare il disarmo. The NPT uh, commits states in Article 6 to nuclear disarmament, to effective measures towards nuclear disarmament. Well, it's, there's a loophole because it doesn't promise like the chemical and biological weapons say they're prohibited, they're illegal, they're unlawful. The NPT just said we five countries make good faith, will make good faith efforts, that's the language, to eliminate, you know, for nuclear disarmament. Sebbene il numero di testate nucleari non sia in aumento, sono proseguiti gli investimenti nella modernizzazione dell'arsenale. Si stanno investendo miles di milioni di dollari all'anno. 
Actualmente 120 mil millones de dólares al año. Estamos usando muchísima plata, la plata con la que podríamos estar eh, eh, librando al mundo enteramente de la hambruna, dándole educación primaria para absolutamente todo el mundo. Climate change, poverty, inequality. We can't be wasting billions of dollars on nuclear weapons. Attualmente i nove stati dotati di armi nucleari hanno in totale quasi 15.000 bombe, che sono tutte più potenti di quella sganciata su Hiroshima. La stragrande maggioranza delle armi nucleari è nelle mani degli Stati Uniti e della Federazione Russa. Cinque paesi ospitano bombe americane sui loro territori e altri 28 paesi sono coinvolti in alleanze nucleari. La maggior parte dei paesi non ha armi nucleari e non appartiene ad alcuna alleanza militare, ma tutti questi paesi condividono il rischio di uno scontro, anche se si verificasse lontano dal loro territorio. This is what re-energized so many governments, particularly in the global south, to take this issue up again. Um, the idea that nuclear weapons uh, do not respect borders, that even a single detonation would affect uh, everyone everywhere, was something that was very significant to these countries that uh, have security interests when it comes to nuclear weapons. Inoltre, all'interno delle Nazioni Unite, Diversi paesi hanno unito le loro forze e sono riusciti a far passare i divieti su diversi tipi di armi, come le mine anti-uomo e le bombe a grappolo. Questi divieti hanno avuto successo, hanno impedito la produzione e l'uso di queste armi, anche se le potenze militari non hanno dato il loro appoggio al divieto. No one no one saying that chemical or biological weapons are okay for certain countries but not others and and no one saying that uh, it's okay to be sheltering under a chemical weapon umbrella or a biological weapon umbrella. Nel 1980 è stata creata l'Associazione Internazionale Medici per la Prevenzione della Guerra Nucleare sulla base di considerazioni etiche condivise dai medici di entrambi i blocchi. È questa associazione che, 26 anni dopo, lancerà la campagna internazionale per l'abolizione delle armi nucleari. Basically, I think what, what drove all of us was this idea that nuclear weapons pose the greatest threat to public health in, in the history of the world, and that as physicians we have a responsibility to address that problem, because all the things that we do for our patients in the course of our daily practice are going to be for naught, If the world blows up in a nuclear war. La campagna chiedeva la negoziazione di un trattato globale, irreversibile, vincolante e verificabile, che potesse essere approvato dalla maggioranza dei paesi. Dal 2010 in poi, la campagna ha rivolto l'attenzione alla catastrofe umanitaria causata dalle armi nucleari e si è allontanata dalle considerazioni sulla sicurezza nazionale, che fino ad allora avevano costituito la narrazione dominante. All of the states party to the non-proliferation treaty agreed by consensus that any use of nuclear weapons would have catastrophic humanitarian consequences and nuclear weapons must be considered through the lens of international humanitarian law. That really opened up space for an examination of the humanitarian effects of nuclear weapons once again. And at the same time, there's also this started these joint statements at the UN. You know, 16 governments got together to acknowledge the catastrophic humanitarian concern, uh, consequences, um, saying that any use of nuclear weapons would have this, and under no circumstances should nuclear weapons be used. And this was quite, you know, like a radical, but, you know, a sort of slowly, quite uh, silently, Changing the narrative. Questo nuovo approccio ha aperto la partecipazione degli stati non dotati di armi nucleari, del mondo accademico e della società civile. Nel 2013, a Oslo, diplomatici di 128 stati si sono incontrati per studiare l'impatto umanitario delle armi nucleari e l'anno successivo, in Messico, hanno proseguito i lavori, sfidando il boicottaggio dei cinque membri permanenti del Consiglio di Sicurezza dell'ONU. Le regole del gioco stavano iniziando a cambiare. It was the first time that you'd even organized something that the P5 didn't support. But we had the civil society forum, the ICANN civil society forum on the eve of this big conference. And we had the then state secretary of Norway, Gilly Larsson. And she talked about, uh, in front of 600 ICANN people in the audience, talked about the, the boycott. Uh, well, they've been very angry, the P5. They came and they demarched us and said, you know, this is a distraction. And she just sort of shrugged her shoulders and said, well, 
you know, their arguments weren't very convincing. And the whole audience laughed, and it was the first time we laughed at the P5. And, you know, I just, it, right there, it just clicked like, oh my God, this is all about changing power dynamics, and this is all about controlling the narrative, and we're doing something, and they're on the outside. A lot of new evidence was, uh, was uh, unveiled, and, and we heard very uh, poignantly and, and prominently from the survivors, the Hibakusha, and also the nuclear test uh, survivors. Looking at um, the effects of an explosion, what this does to human bodies, what this does to cities, um, but also what it does to our economies and our way of life looking at the connections between the impacts and also the risks that we currently face, um, both in terms of intentional use of nuclear weapons, but also the risks from failures in command and control structures uh, or accidental use of nuclear weapons. Well, in Oslo, we presented evidence about our uh, inability to provide an adequate humanitarian response in case of use of nuclear weapons. No equipment exists to protect them from some of the radiation seeping through. Can you justify putting even more people at risk? Even if you get in, the number of victims is beyond anything you've ever seen. I was in Nayarit, Mexico at the second conference on, that led to the treaty and there was a moment in the afternoon on the last day that was amazing. Seventy years the nuclear armed states have told everyone else, we'll manage this, you stay home, don't worry about this, we've got it. And I think it was at that moment that the rest of the world woke up and said, this will affect us. We have a right, we have an obligation to have our voices heard on this. Nel 2014, con la terza conferenza in Austria, una massa critica di paesi ha sostenuto il cosiddetto impegno umanitario, impegnandosi a compiere sforzi per stigmatizzare, vietare ed eliminare le armi nucleari. The conclusion was that there was a legal gap, there was no prohibition in place on nuclear weapons, and that was a problem. And Austria committed their pledge to work to fill the legal gap. La strada per avanzare nell'ambito del trattato di non proliferazione sembrava volgere al termine, mentre si apriva la strada verso un divieto totale delle armi nucleari. Nel 2016 è stato istituito presso le Nazioni Unite un gruppo di lavoro aperto che ha raccomandato di negoziare un divieto. It's a very complicated way to say we'll have a bunch of meetings where we're going to talk about what we can do to get rid of nuclear weapons. We had pushed and we've done all the work and we have been reaching out to governments and we've held regional meetings, we've been talking to parliamentarians and we've been nagging, nagging, nagging for like three years. And at the Open and the Working Group, it's almost like you pulled out a plug and the support just came out from everyone. And so by the end of this meeting in 2016, um, we had uh, well over 100 countries going on the record saying that they wanted the General Assembly to negotiate a treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons. That's the government side of what happened. But behind the scenes and in the streets and through creative actions, people have been pushing and pushing and pushing to make sure this happened. This wasn't just a couple of people in suits saying, oh, let's have some meetings. Fino al 2017, il trattato ha ottenuto un notevole sostegno. I negoziati sono stati condotti con la guida di Elaine White Gomez, della Costa Rica. De Costa Rica, che è un paese che decidió desde hace 70 años tener un enfoque distinto hacia la paz y la seguridad, aboliendo sus fuerzas armadas. Entonces, eso implica para un país como nosotros, que nosotros tenemos, pusimos toda nuestra confianza en un sistema internacional que a través de las reglas y de las instituciones podemos resolver los conflictos y eh, los problemas de la humanidad. In the course of the humanitarian initiative and the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, uh, again, women um, have been instrumental. We had uh, several women diplomats that were leaders for their countries. Um, we had some all-women delegations also participating in the negotiations. Um, we had women that were very active in the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. Hay, digamos, dos enfoques cuando uno conversa sobre el tema de la participación de las mujeres. La primera de ellas, somos miembros de la humanidad, tenemos derecho de participar. También contribuimos desde la perspectiva de nuestra propia vivencia. Hay una contribución desde tener perspectiva una perspectiva distinta que refuerce eh, los procesos de negociación. I don't believe that women are more peaceful than men inherently, but I think that women play certain roles in society. If your main 
uh, perspective is, you know, feeding people, uh, providing health care to people, education to children. That's going to be your perspective on, on decision to go to war and use certain types of weapons. Inoltre, sono state ascoltate le voci degli esseri umani colpiti. Each person had a name. Each person was loved by someone. Let us ensure that their deaths were not in vain. Estamos hablando de seres humanos que en su experiencia humana, en esta vida, han conocido los horrores de lo que estamos tratando de solucionar. Eso le dio a la conferencia un espíritu de un sentido de, de ética y de justicia que no habría sido posible si ellos no estuvieran allí. Well, my job is to share my experience in Hiroshima and what it means to live in nuclear age, what horror that brings to humanity, and we should never ever let that happen again to another human being. That's my message, and I can't stop talking about it. I am going to keep talking. Nel luglio dello stesso anno, 122 paesi, circa due terzi del totale, hanno votato a favore del trattato di interdizione. Ora, per entrare in vigore, il trattato deve attirare 50 ratifiche. The treaty uh, includes a broad range of prohibitions, uh, a prohibition of course on the use uh, of nuclear weapons as well as the threatened use of nuclear weapons, uh, a prohibition on testing and production of nuclear weapons, uh, and indeed a prohibition on the possession of nuclear weapons. Uh, it also says that a country cannot assist another country to engage in any of these kinds of activities. But then it also demands that you help survivors uh, of nuclear detonations and help to clean up the environment after detonation. Um, and I think that that's really important language. It also has quite uh, progressive language on gender. Um, both encouraging uh, participation of women in all decision making around nuclear weapons and also recognizes the gendered impact of nuclear weapons. I think we will move to a point where the taboo against nuclear weapons um, is as strong as the taboo against other weapons of mass destruction. If, if this treaty was insignificant, if it didn't mean anything, why were they fighting it? I also think it's really shown the power of civil society and governments working together um, we stood up to some of the most powerful, most heavily militarized countries on this planet and did something that they were forbidding us to do. The ability to kill massive amounts of people and uh, inflict suffering and pain on, on civilians is not a sign of power and prestige. It's what dictators do, it's what uh, human rights violators do, not respectable countries that want to have a good standing in the international community. And now it's their turn to be on the outside. They're going to have to justify why, why they want mass weapons of mass destruction, why they think threatening to mass murder civilians or end us all. Collective suicide is a reasonable security strategy. Il premio Nobel, assegnato all'ICAN, ha rafforzato e pubblicizzato ulteriormente la campagna. And the headlines were um, Nobel Peace Prize comes to effect a little bit, which is exactly what it was. And it's such a great thing because we get to celebrate as a campaign of 500 organizations in 100 countries. And it's a huge validation for the work that those campaigners are doing in, in whatever context. And I think that's the most beautiful thing um, that I felt uh, immediately after. Just seeing our, our campaigners, these different all across the world, get on TV, you know, take ownership of the, this amazing moment that had happened and really be elevated and, and validated for their hard work over the years. Affinché il trattato sia ratificato nel maggior numero possibile di paesi, la pressione sociale è fondamentale. L'impegno parlamentare, l'appello delle città, le campagne per togliere investimenti, la sensibilizzazione e la mobilitazione sono necessari per far sì che il divieto prenda forma. E poi la pressione deve continuare fino a quando la stigmatizzazione delle armi nucleari non si concluda con una vera e propria eradicazione. ICANN also has what's called the Parliamentary Pledge, uh, which is signed by over 800 uh, parliamentarians across the world. And it's a pledge to, um, to work to, to bring the treaty into force uh, in that country. Parliamentarians are the representatives of the people, and they have a huge 
role to play in shifting government position. Everyone can write to their senator or deputado, wherever they are, and get them to, to endorse the, the parliamentary pledge. Y disponemos de una red de parlamentarios tanto en el Congreso como en el Senado, eh, en apoyo de la campaña y de las posiciones del, de, del ICANN, ¿no? en pro del Tratado de Prohibición de Armas Nucleares, y en estos momentos están 92 eh, parlamentarios. So the, the uh, ICANN Cities Appeal is a commitment um, that cities can make um, to endorse the, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and call on their governments uh, to join. Uh, nuclear weapons are designed to be city, city destroyers, uh, to have the maximum impact. Uh, to destroy as, you know, as many lives and, uh, and as much infrastructure as possible. Porque las bombas nucleares y los misiles están dirigidos a las ciudades, ¿no? Eh, es una amenaza a la gente que vive en cada ciudad. Luego es misión del ayuntamiento que esté preocupado por luchar contra la violencia, defender a sus ciudadanos eh, y a sus vecinos y vecinas frente a la amenaza nuclear. We went to our city council to divest. We spoke to the the finance chair of the council, and he said he would write a letter to the controller, who controls all the investments for the pensions of the city, which billions of dollars, you know, if we could get 10 members of the council to sign on with him. I mean, I called my councilman, and they told me he was on paternity leave. He had had his first child, so I wrote him a long letter saying, what a wonderful gift to your child to have a nuclear-free world if you would sign this letter and he signed it. It only takes a few people to organize with city council. It only takes a few people to organize an event at your local library or a church or a school um, to have a conversation and to make a difference to policy because all of this trickles up to policy making. Dal 2012, l'iniziativa Don't Bank on the Bomb si adopera per rendere più difficile il finanziamento delle società coinvolte nella produzione di armi nucleari. And what Don't Bank on the Bomb does is it gives everyone a pathway to resist nuclear weapons. People might not know this, but private companies make key components for nuclear weapons. And in order for them to be able to do that, they need financing from banks and pension funds. If you have a bank account, you can do something about nuclear weapons. You can talk to your bank and ask them, do they have a policy on investment? If you have a pension fund, is your pension fund profiting from the production of nuclear weapons? And if they are, why? You have a right as a consumer, you have power to do something, to change that. And people are. I also learned that the stigmatizing effect goes beyond law, but it also can have economic impacts, which are extremely powerful when we're dealing with um, the production and sale of weapon systems. The United States closed its last factory of munitions in Racimo without having never signed the Convention against the munitions in Racimo. You know, the U.S. never signed the Landmines Treaty, but we don't make them anymore and we don't use them. The decision to ban nuclear weapons will be a courageous one. It will change the world. There are billions of reasons why we need to ban nuclear weapons now. Each and every one of them has a name, a story, and a dream. El tratado es una herramienta bastante potente, pero el desarme nuclear no va a llegar con la firma del tratado. Necesitamos de un movimiento global. Necesitamos que sea que, que la gente entienda, que de, de, de generar conciencia a nivel de todo el mundo. El primer punto de la primera marcha mundial fue tratar de luchar para conseguir que se erradicaran las armas nucleares. Lo mismo que están erradicadas las químicas y la bacteriológica. Objetivo, volver a poner en la agenda la cuestión de la no violencia y la cuestión de acabar con las armas nucleares. La marcha lo que va es a recorrer durante varios meses eh, un montón de países, dar la vuelta al mundo. El divieto de las armas nucleares es un clamor que unisce a los pueblos del mundo para defenderse de las potencias militares. Al di là dei confini, sta prendendo forma una nazione umana universale. Un mondo senza guerre e senza violenza. 
dove esseri umani in armonia con l'ambiente e con dei diritti costruiscono un sistema economico equo. Sarà un mondo che unisce la diversità di etnie, di lingue e di culture in un bellissimo mosaico. In la storia umana siamo in permanente evoluzione e eh, i cambi importanti non si danno dalla noche alla mañana. Se le persone che stavano luchando per il fin della schiavitù avessero pensato che approvando una ley o un trattato in un, eh, en un lugar muy específico no se iba a lograr, no tendríamos hoy lo que tenemos. Estamos en un proceso de transición y de cambio estructural. La comunidad internacional ya ha atravesado por esas etapas antes. Si nos vamos a la norma contra el colonialismo, se dio en momentos en que el colonialismo estaba en su máxima expresión. We've seen throughout history that making change has been the result of people coming together collectively, um, whether that's been the civil rights movement or women's rights, right to vote. Um, or uh, ending slavery or ending apartheid. It's all been collective people's action that has changed the world. Uh, I mean, just imagine how quickly the world has changed its mind on other things. Things like gay marriage, that was very controversial and unacceptable to many, and then very quickly it just changed. And I think it can be the same thing with nuclear weapons. Uh, that it's just like, oh my God, remember when we did that? Remember when we had these like, crazy suicide bombs and like, we just thought that it was normal? Un giorno, l'era nucleare sarà consegnata alla nostra memoria come un brutto sogno sorto in un momento di paura e distruzione. Ancora una volta, stiamo ritrovando la via per tornare al nostro percorso storico ed è proprio nelle nostre battute d'arresto e nei momenti di confusione che appare una direzione evolutiva, quella che ci ha guidato fin dagli albori del tempo. Riconosciamo che la vita di ogni persona è sacra, e rifiutiamo completamente le armi nucleari perché producono danni e sofferenze indicibili negli esseri umani. But um you know politics changes constantly. We're in a political climate right now that would have been totally unthinkable uh, many years ago and that doesn't only have to be negative. It can also be positive changes. It can also be quick changes in issues that we thought were in intransigent uh, for a long time and nuclear weapons is is part of that. Working on nuclear disarmament is definitely uh, a passion for me. Um, it is my heart and soul, I think. Um, well, the whole project of, of abolishing war, of challenging violence. Um, and it really comes from a place of believing that it is possible to change the world that we're living in. For me, what me motivates is the hope. The hope that it can be made the change. Y, y la convicción de que hay que hacerlo, de que hay que hacer cosas, de que esto no está bien. I'm really and constantly inspired by the people I get to work with. Because people who choose to spend their energy on nuclear weapons are not seeking fame and fortune. <laughs> uh, they're seeking to make the world better for themselves and for coming generations. To have the opportunity to work with such talented and passionate people uh, to uh, be part of a historic process that will have uh, implications for the security and welfare of future generations um, is a great privilege and honor and I couldn't think of anything else that I would prefer to be doing. These weapons are not, uh, they're not a force of, of nature, they're not an act of God. We have built these weapons. We know how to take them apart. And, and I think it's important for us all to understand, no one of us is going to do this by ourselves. But if each one of us does that part of the job which is ours to do, we can be successful again as we were in the 80s, and we can save the world again. And we can look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, okay, I did what I was supposed to do. We Hibachia had been waiting for the band for 72 years. Let this be the beginning of the end of nuclear weapons.